Askren versus Maya. I loved it. I loved this fight. Now, you could see in the stand-up that these guys aren't the polished. And when I say polished, I mean like uh, Anderson Silva, where that's exactly what they want to be. As a matter of fact, if they wanted to go and just do a pure kickboxing match, they could get a main event bout anytime they wanted. It, no, I understand it wasn't like that, but it, it was still effective. I don't know if Ben Askren threw an air ball. I think everything that he threw touched Damian Maya somewhere, including his kicks. Damian Maya, everything was a lead, was a straight power hand, boom to the face, boom to the body, everything as hard as he could go. Then he was throwing kicks. One thing that Maya can do, Maya can be as reckless as he wants on his feet because he does not mind being taken down. Now, a lot of guys will say, uh, I don't care if I'm on my back. They're lying. They do care. It's not where they want to be. But Maya is so good with the transitions, as you saw in this fight, that he'll get on top by going to his back first. He will use guard and half guard as a way of forming a reversal and coming out on top. Okay. If you're going to get into a ground fight with Ben Askren, you are likely to be taken down and pounded. If you are going to get into a ground fight with Damian Maya, you are likely to get submitted. Well, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Now, as it comes to proclaiming who the victor is going to be, those two things don't go hand in hand. They are opposites. So who is going to be more effective? Ben Askren with the ground and pound or Damian Maya with the submission? I mean, that's really what this was all about to find out. Fight could have been very much different if it wasn't a main event, right? We talk about this a lot, but you have two different fights. If it's a three-round fight, you have a different fight with a different outcome. If you have a five-round fight, it changes things. So, I guess as I looked at this match, Damian Maya won, fair and square. But this was a very competitive... I would be curious, let me put it to you like this. I would be very curious after the fight and after what we witnessed, how the judges saw it up until that point. It could have been two rounds Askren. It probably should have been a round apiece, but it could have been two rounds for Maya. The striking was really strange. Maya was coming out everything with power shots, pretty good with the leg kicks. Ben was coming out pretty good with the leg kicks. Everything was a bunch of punches. Like if he if he would grab Maya, he pop pop pop. He you know three rabbit punches real fast, and then on a break, and then I, it was just fun. It was really fun. I thought that Maya's takedown defense was great. Um, I thought that he moved really well. Dan Hardy was on the call and had referenced and complimented Maya for his anti-clinch game. Now, that's a term that announcers don't use a lot. That's more of a term used in the gym that fellow fighters would understand. But boy, Hardy nailed it. That's exactly what Maya was doing. I had a training partner who never wrestled a day in his life, Nate Quarry. And one day, all of a sudden, you can't take Nate down. All of a sudden, he's just Joe, Mr. Defense, and he, everything's going to be like, Nate, what the hell are you doing? Well, what he was doing was this anti-clinch game that Hardy was talking about. A clinch has to be an agreed-upon position by both guys. Now, the sport of wrestling, per the rules, will force both guys to agree upon that position because if one guy tries to back out or not engage in wrestling, that's called stalling. So he won't do that. So a wrestler like Ben, or in my case, my own teammate, Nate Quarry, I never seen anything like it. That's against the rules. That's against the rules in every practice room, on every competi uh, competition surface I'd ever seen. And all of a sudden, Nate teaches me overnight, no, you have nothing unless I play along. So when Dan Hardy, all these years later, pulls out that term anti-clinch, I just thought you guys should know what it meant because it was very appropriate. It was insider by an announcer. But... It's something that if you hear and see in the future, I want you to be aware of. And Dan was wise enough to call it out for the first time. So that is what Maya is doing, though. Maya is not playing along. There is no stalling in MMA. You're more than welcome to go backwards. Sugar Ray Robinson never went forward. Floyd Mayweather doesn't go for Sugar Ray Robinson did not go forward to the point. He ran five miles every day. Now, that's a lot. That would be a disciplined runner, but it's fairly common in boxing and MMA. You got to run a lot. You got to do a lot of road work. Sugar Ray Robinson did it backwards. He ran his five miles backwards because that's the way he was fighting. 
he was only fighting, backing up, making you come to him, bop, bop, and he's out of the way because he's he's going backwards. It's something as a wrestler, I don't know anything about. We had to go for we had to either stand our ground or go forward. You cannot back up. I think it created a little bit of a problem for Askren. I think Askren worked through it. I can just tell you for me as a viewer, I enjoyed the hell out of that. Then when they finally got to the ground, oh my gosh, I mean, who got the best of who? Right? I understand the submission. I understand the reversal by Maya, but you've got to also understand the side control by Ben Askren. You've got to also understand the advancement of positions by Ben Askren. I mean, there was a lot going on there. Fun fight. Fair fight. Maya won. Uncle Chill. Uncle Chill. There's no bad guy like Uncle Chill. He never lost. Not even around, undefeated, undisputed. Oh yeah, here comes the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Chill.